Previously on Justice for All with Judge Christina Perez. My son Alex, he's been being teased by his daughter, Zoe. So, are you still at school? No, my mom pulled me out of school because I couldn't handle it. I wasn't eating, I couldn't sleep, it just... Really? Yeah, it really tore me down. For me, it is about the law and people. That is not a legal defense, let me tell you. And how people can resolve and better themselves. Justice with passion. I knew I was going to go into law because I always defended everybody. I was always the one who found a solution and tried to resolve the problem by having people talk to each other. Justice with truth. So I'm giving you one more chance to tell me the truth. This is Justice for All with Judge Christina Perez. What do you know about Alex? Mm. Honestly, we're just in the same class, science class, and I, that's it. Mm -hmm. And how many times did you ask him, what are you? Mm, one time, two. So then Alex is lying? Well, well my friends were, Okay. it wasn't me. Your friends aren't here. If you see from the text messages that she never said anything and... I mean, she did ask, ask him a couple questions. She initiated a text message. Why initiate a text message with seven other kids? She might have just been overly curious, but I don't think overly she... Overly curious? He, she asked him at school more than once, what is he? Did you gossip about him and say things in front of him that other people could hear? Well, yes or no? No. No? Really? So Alex is making this all up? No, my, my friends were saying names and I didn't know what it and was. And you didn't say one name? No. No. Okay. Did you spread rumors about him? Mm. No. Okay. Um, did you say nasty comments about him or mean comments about him? No. Okay. Uh, did you know that he had one good friend and you had a group of eight, ten, eight friends? Mm -mm. No. Okay. So, are you planning, Mrs. Brown, to send him to another school? Um, if my son is ready, but again, I, I, he's, you know, I'm still straightening his hair. He's having identity issues. Some days that counseling is good days, and other days it's bad. It's, mm -hmm. it's been awful. It's so much stress on my family and my home. Okay. I can't work. Um, I work at a hairdresser. Um, well, I work in a hair salon. I'm the hairdresser. And um, it's difficult. I, I, I can't afford it, but yeah. I have so to be there for my son. So what is the claim for $3,715? Explain to me. The counseling, me missing work. I, I have my clients. They pre-book. I have evidence here. Okay, we're going to take uh, Mrs. Brown's evidence, please. Why do you think sure. Alex left the school? Maybe, maybe he felt like he wasn't treated the same, and yeah. can you imagine if you wanted to leave your school? What would make you leave your school? I maybe I'm treating. Hmm? I'm, maybe I'm treated differently. But so, are you being homeschooled when yeah. when yeah. you left that school? You were being homeschooled. Yeah, my mom is teaching me now at okay. home. So. All right. Are you going to go back to school to another school? I don't know. I want to, but I just feel like I'm not going to, nobody's going to really accept me for the, who I am. The, the school didn't do anything else? They didn't try to intervene? They didn't try to speak to the colognes? Nothing? The teachers, they try to speak to him about it. It just seemed like it was pushed underneath a, a rug mm. um, as time went on. So I just, I decided to pull my son out. Mm. I, I, if we don't, as parents, start figuring out what happens, especially in this age group, then it's going to get worse in high school. Mrs. Brown and Mr. Colon, you guys, the, the, the legal system can't be there always for you guys. And you guys are going to have to figure this out the old-fashioned way, by sitting these two kids down and figuring out what went wrong. And the hardest thing you're going to do as a parent is admit that your child may be wrong. Okay? okay? I'm not judging you as a parent. Please understand that. But what I have here is a mother suing you because of the actions that your daughter started and created made her son not only lose his confidence as a young boy, 
get bullied, a chain reaction at school, and she, he was so unhappy and distressed being in school that he had to actually leave school. Put yourself in his shoes. How would you feel? Not good. Okay. Yes, Zoe, do you have something to say? Yes. Um, well, it was confusing and surprising because my friends and I always goof around and he, we, all of us, like including him, we, I don't think we, it doesn't get in our feelings. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, Zoe, joking around is joking around. That's not a problem. But when you do it in repetition and you do it with power, that is the definition of bullying. Coming up on Justice For All. As far as my child goes, we have those, for the most part, open conversations. And I feel like, you know, it would have just behooved you to just talk to your child. And I don't think that we would have been here. And later. A few months into the relationship, he started getting really controlling um, and really possessive. After we broke up, that's when things kind of got really scary. We're back with the case of Justine Brown, who is suing Dane Cologne for emotional distress. Have you ever been bullied before? Mm, no, but I know people that have. Oh, really? And do you know how people feel when they're bullied? Mm, sad and mad, but... They feel really bad about themselves. So you guys... Um, do, 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 it's just these eight, these other seven kids that bother you, or...? No, it kind of spread around the school, and then mm -hmm. a lot of people started calling me names like that, like Oreo, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. What do you think I should do, Mr. Cohen? What do you think the right thing to do legally is here? She's suing you for almost $4,000. I, I think that's a, a bit of an overreach. I mean, I know that maybe some of the best things weren't said by my daughter, but I don't know if you can really directly relate his state of mind or his sadness to a couple of questions over a few months. You know, some of the other the kids, other kids said meaner things. I don't know to what degree those hurt his feelings. But I think it's a, it's a little bit um, hyperbolic to say that I need to pay her four thousand okay. dollars. Agreed. There was other kids who got involved. Okay, yeah. I, I hear you on that. Uh, she was the instigator. She's the one who repeated it, and she had the power to do it. She had all her friends behind her. I mean, I, you know, I don't know if she had all her friends behind her the first time or if she just asked him quietly in class. I don't know the situation exactly. You but. gave me a text message that proves to me that she has the, the backup to do this. I mean, okay. yes, it also is evidence, though, that she didn't say anything about, you know, maybe mean, anything mean besides just asking a question. But again, it's, 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 it's how you ask the question, and it's why you ask the question. And she already asked him at school. Yes, Ms. Brown. Yes, again, like you said, as, as far as my child goes, we have those, for the most part, open conversations. And I feel like, you know, it would have just behooved you to just talk to your child, and I don't think that we would have been here, or maybe we could have nipped it in a bud, but unfortunately, he, he didn't do so, and this has caused a lot of distress for my home, my son's identity. I hope that he can be strong enough to move past it, but again, we have good days, we have bad. It's up and down. Okay. I have a child who felt so bad about himself that he had to leave the school, and all the fingers point to your daughter, okay? So you as a parent can either investigate that or not. Maybe your daughter's also being forced to do something she doesn't want to do. Because there's definitely fear in her voice. And there's not a lot of truth in what she's telling me. It's either she knew she was doing something was wrong or she was forced to do it. And if, that's the, if it's the latter, then your daughter may be being bullied herself. And if you're not there trying to catch that and look for the signs, then she could have a problem in the future. Do you understand? Yeah, I do. I, I just, um, she wasn't saying any of the names, though. You know, she was just kind of asking. I, I get that maybe you're, it's not You're justifying. Best. You're justifying. I get, I get what you're doing, and I understand, but you're justifying this. Okay? So now, uh, Ms. Brown, you were suing for something that's called emotional distress. Yes, ma'am. Um, emotional distress under the law, you have to show an extreme and outrageous conduct um, that leads to, to damages. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, is this out extreme and outrageous under the definition of the law? No. Problematic, yes. 
Okay? So based on that, I cannot grant your full claim of $3,715. I think what is appropriate is that Mr. Colon will reimburse you the $1,100 for the one month session of when um, Alex had to go to the uh, counselor. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what pe other people do, right? You can't, you can't kind of always think to yourself, oh, well, she did that, so why am I? You have to look at what you did wrong first, okay? Those people, those other kids who also call them names, they will figure out a way or, or they will end up feeling bad or paying or, or something will happen to them, okay? They will somehow take responsibility. You are here and I believe that you were the instigator and I just want you to take responsibility. I don't think you're, you're a beautiful little girl. I don't think you intentionally did it in a way where you realized how much it would hurt Alex, okay? That's what I want you to understand, okay? But I want you to understand that it did hurt him a lot, okay? Okay? Right? So, Alex, be confident, be assertive. If you have a problem, tell adults the same thing for you, Zoe. If you feel like your friends are pushing you and you don't feel comfortable, tell your dad. Okay, you don't have to do things, only what your parents say, but you don't have to do things that you don't like. If your gut doesn't feel right, then you don't do it. Okay, all right, so based on the evidence, uh, Ms. Brown, I will um, rule in favor in part and award you $1,100. Thank you, yeah. Judge Perez has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $1,100. I'm sorry that it hurt your feelings. I will do my homework and hopefully we get to know each other better. Yeah, I accept your apology and hopefully we get to be friends. Coming up on Justice For All. He left me a message on the parking lot outside of my apartment that says, we are not meant for each other. Have a good life without me, which is terrifying. <laughs> April Handers is suing Malcolm Eldridge in the amount of $250. Ms. Handers claims her ex-boyfriend defaced her apartment's parking lot and says she paid to have the graffiti removed. So, Ms. Handers, we are here suing the defendant for $250 because of his artwork. Is that correct? That is correct. Why don't you explain exactly what happened? So, Malcolm and I had been dating for about eight months. Um, and few months into the relationship he started getting really controlling um, and really possessive he made me like unfollow all of my uh, Instagram uh, guys on my Instagram hmm. uh, that wasn't a red flag to you well it was after that point that I broke up with him after we broke up that's when things kind of got really scary um, he was calling me constantly just over and over again and then he would show up at my apartment at like odd hours um, mm -hmm. day and night and uh, finally, he, he showed up at my place when I had a friend over, and uh, he keeps yelling about his hard drive, and, and he wants his hard drive, but I, I was kind of scared to go down and, and meet him and, and everything. But then I just, I finally, I tossed it down from the balcony to him mm -hmm. because I didn't know what else to do. Okay. Did and you then, catch your hard drive? Uh, no, ma'am. It was not a, a toss. She threw it at me. Okay. Uh, it hit me and then it hit the ground and it broke. Okay. Okay, so you gave him his property. You're not suing for that to replace that. So what's the problem here? Um, so I woke up the next morning after that happened and outside my window, um, the, he left me a message on the parking lot outside of my apartment that says, okay, April, you're right. We are, we are not meant for each other. Have a good life without me. Um, which is terrifying. <laughs> Coming up. I don't think April actually wanted the chalk to leave initially. I think if it was that big of a deal, she would have gotten rid of it. We're back with the case of April Handers, who is suing Malcolm Eldridge for property damage. How long did it take you to write that on the parking lot? Uh, not long. Must have taken you a long time because, let me see, the car, it's probably a letter is probably a third of an actual size of the car I'm looking at. Well, my hard drive... So did you realize that was uh, pr uh, public property, I mean private property of the building? Uh, I didn't realize that chalk on a sidewalk or a parking garage was vandalism. I thought it was just chalk, something that could wash off in the rain. I work with it at work with kids. Mm -hmm. I wash it off all the How time. How did it make you feel that she said you were scary? Um... 
I mean, at this point, I was pretty much done with the relationship. Uh, I don't think that I was, I was being scary. We had dated for almost a year. And Why then, make her unfollow people off her social media? I mean, media? it wasn't, it wasn't, look, my, my idea of a relationship is when you get serious, you compromise, you make sacrifices. And if the person feels uncomfortable that you're talking to a certain person, then you should talk about it, not just say no, not just say those are my friends, whatever. We could have had a dialogue about it, but we didn't. Well, it sounds like you didn't have a dialogue because you made her mm -hmm. unfollow all her friends, so there was no dialogue there. Okay, so then what happens with your landlord? So my landlord calls me um, a couple weeks later, and I was hoping it would fade away because I, you know, couldn't get it off, and it was no rain, terribly. no nothing, huh? No. Was this color uh, chalk or just white chalk? Yeah, it's color. Color, huh? And if you erase the chalk initially, it will go away. Uh, I don't think April actually wanted the chalk to leave initially. I think if it was that big of a deal, she would have gotten rid of it. But How I, would she have gotten rid of it? It took a pressure washer and $250 for that pressure washer after, to get it off. After it sat there for weeks. Judge Perez's verdict when justice for all returns. So why should she clean up your mess? You're the one who defaced somebody else's property, not her. So why is it her obligation to clean up after something that you intentionally did, destroying somebody else's property? It wasn't even her property that's the kicker. Why wouldn't you pay for it? I mean, $250 for uh, pressure washing for chalk is, to me, insane. It, what I think happened was the landlord saw, saw an opportunity to take advantage of April. Oh, okay, yeah, that's it, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. That makes all the sense in the world. How long did it stay there? It stayed there for two weeks. Two weeks. You should have known that leaving color chalk there in the elements on asphalt would probably be very difficult to get off, so you should, probably should have gone right away and cleaned it up, and you didn't. So therefore, because you defaced somebody else's property and the defend and the plaintiff was held responsible for the cleaning, she has a right to actual damages, which is the $250 that she paid a landlord to clean up your mess. So it's a very simple premise, uh, and it's um, a very simple case. Based on the evidence, um, I will grant your claim in $250 that you. you had to pay uh, for the cleanup of the mess that the defendant did, okay? Good luck. Thank you. Judge Perez has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $250. I'm sorry I didn't clean up the chalk initially, but I feel like it was the only way to get through to you. You're right, it didn't get through to me. I don't want to talk to you ever again.